back to my YouTube channel. Um, I tried to get somewhat of a cute filming setup behind me, um, like we discussed in our last video. I don't have good lighting in my apartment, so I just have to sit in front of this window. So, um, it's actually stunning outside right now. The sun is out and that rarely happens here in Indiana, so we're gonna get this video on the road so that I can take my booty outside. If you are new here, I have been going through the book of James here on my channel in my Faith Friday video series where every Friday here on my channel I post a faith related video to help you grow and pursue your relationship with Christ. I basically just share what I learned in the Bible that week and that's that. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, but hopefully you enjoy it and if you do, hit the subscribe button so you can stick around and join the Happy Soul Tribe. Um, if you're not new here, welcome back and we're just gonna get this ball rolling, get right into the video. Chapter four is actually pretty short and then this is, we're almost to the end of James. There's only five chapters in James. So um, in these videos, I always start out by reading the scripture, putting the scripture here on the screen and then we break it down piece by piece. The little subtitle for chapter four says, submit yourselves to God. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity, enmity? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Enmity against God. Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think that scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That's why scripture also says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Hum humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or a sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy, but you... Who are you to judge your neighbor? Gotta sip my tea. And then the next little subtitle is boasting about tomorrow. Now you who say today or tomorrow, we will go do this, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why do you not even, why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. And I've got a lot highlighted. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and you fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. Um, so he's talking here about how oftentimes Christianity, or people in general, we are constantly judging each other, fighting with each other, arguing with each other. There's literal wars going on. People are always like head to head tooth and nail. Oh my gosh, I just realized I forgot to put on my wedding ring. Don't come for me in the comments. I'm still married. I just forgot to put it on after I got ready. Um, so people are always going head to head and he kind of says like, why? And so he points it out here. Don't they come from the desires that battle within you? And the desires that he's talking about is the desires of the flesh. And the flesh is a constant thing that we have to battle as human beings. It's a part of us. Um, but thankfully, God gives us the Holy Spirit to help us fight the flesh and fight those desires and fill them with the Holy Spirit and more of what God desires. Um, and when we 
lean into what God desires for us. God desires us to have peace with one another and to love your neighbor and to love those around you, not to constantly constantly be fighting over things that are so, so tiny in the grand scheme of things. Or don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. And then it talks about how God is a jealous God. And this is also something that confuses a lot of people. And it used to confuse me because I associate jealousy as like a negative, sinful thing. Um, but when it comes to God, it's nothing is sinful. Um, and he jealously longs for our heart to be 100% focused on him instead of this constant battle that's going on inside of us of the flesh and the spirit kind of going head to head and we always kind of tend to lean towards the flesh like that's just the way that we are we are completely flawed human beings and the battle of choosing holiness over the flesh is so freaking hard for us to do sometimes and so he's sitting there jealous like jealous that that the flesh still has a part of your heart because he wants a hundred percent of your heart and it's our life our life's work to kind of try to get to give as much of our heart to christ as we can day by day little by little um and then when it says when you ask you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives this is kind of a big like verse that I kind of want to check myself with sometimes because I'm really bad about even praying for the things that I want or plan on in my life and um, I feel like sometimes when I do pray for those things I kind of don't really evaluate my motives behind why do I even want that thing like what's that thing going to give to me what am I going to do with that thing and am I going to use that to glorify God? Because if I'm not, my motives aren't pure. And am I going to use that to show my gratitude to God? Is God's love and power and greatness going to be shown through me asking for this specific thing? Whatever it may be. And I would say most of the time, no. Most of the time we're praying like, oh, please God, give me this job. Or please God, help me find a boyfriend. Please God, help me find a house. Please God, help me get... A raise or something like that and we never really check our motives behind the prayers that we pray and not just checking our motives but making sure that we're not just praying that our will be done but that God's will be done ultimately because we should desire that for our lives it shouldn't just be like okay so I really want a new house but like I guess if it's your will or whatever let it be done no, we should be like, God, I genuinely know that what you have for me is better than anything that I could ever ask for or create myself. So just let your plan be what I go to, be what I cling to, and be what I run to. Let your plan happen. But this is what I'm praying for. And if that's a part of your plan, help me get there. And that's how we should pray. And then I want to point out whoever chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Just because right now... <laughs> in this world it's really hard to determine whether you're a friend of the world or an enemy of god and it points it out that you can't be both you have to be one or the other and the world will hate you because you have to become an enemy of the world to be a friend of god and vice versa and the world will hate you and that's so uncomfortable for us and that's so hard for us to have people not like us or people make fun of us for loving Jesus too much or people make fun of the way that we live or the decisions that we make or call us names or whatever. That's so hard for us that we would rather be a friend of the world and an enemy of God but there's so much more blessing in being a friend of God and an enemy of the world. That is what we are called to do doing your best each day, what God wants for your life, his desires, his truth, resting on his promises, trying to make your life look more and more like what the Bible tells you your, like sh your life should look like instead of making your life blend in so effortlessly with what the world looks like that people don't even know that you're a Christ follower. God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. And I have this in my apartment on multiple sticky notes just because it talks about it a lot in the book of James alone, but all over the Bible, how God just really, really lifts the low. He focuses on the least of these. He focuses on the meek and the little and making 
elevating those small people because that's kind of what Jesus did. It was all kind of an example. Jesus was a carpenter. He was poor. He, was, he wasn't like some rich king that everyone highly respected based off of his appearance and his wealth. He was a normal person, like a very normal to the eye person. And obviously he's the most high. He is the greatest, the greatest blessing to ever exist. And literally the sacrificial lamb that gives us eternal life, but came in the appearance of such a small man. And it's just beautiful to me that God is a God for the least of these and it's always a nice reminder to me that like I said in my last video pride has no place in my life I'm not saying I don't struggle with pride I'm I'm just saying this truth there's no room for pride in my life or your life or anybody's life and when pride slips in like we get further and further away from God that's literally what pride is it's just a giant fat wedge that will destroy your entire life and that's just a good reminder to me to constantly be in prayer over my pride and making sure that I'm looking for where pride shows up in my life because God opposes the proud. Like, we have nothing to even be proud about. We have nothing to be boastful about. We have not done anything for ourselves. We are sinful, broken human beings, and without God, that's all we are. But with Him, we are humble servants. We are loved. We are valuable. We are blameless. And... He will honor that and he will lift up the humble people. Again, a verse that kind of confirms that is down into verse 9. It says, change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. And that's kind of like a sad, depressing verse, but we have to get really, really real with ourselves and realize just how broken we actually are, how messed up we actually are, how in need of a savior we actually are, how small we actually are in comparison to Christ and kind of really, really humble ourselves, like drive it into the ground so that you can be lifted up by him. And all of your, all of your confidence doesn't come from you. Like you should be so humbled that anything that you have to actually be proud about or to brag about or to be excited about is from him. And that's literally what the truth is. Like we have nothing without him. And that's what that is saying is humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. And that's what humbleness is to me is realizing like without him, I suck so bad. And we all suck. Like we literally all suck so bad without Christ. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy, but you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Um, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. There's one judge, one ultimate lawgiver, justice giver, and that's God. He's the only one who's perfect enough to cast judgment on any one of us. Not to, This isn't to say that we should never um, encourage our brothers and sisters that are directly close to us, people that we have a duty to give advice to, that's not to say that we shouldn't lovingly point them in the right direction. That's a good kind of judgment is kind of supporting the people in your life that you are close to, that you are loved by, your little neighborhood, and make sure that they're always continually growing in the way that they should be, being a spiritual accountability partner to them. That's totally a different realm of judgment. But I'm talking about you walking around and pointing your finger at everybody and saying that they're a hypocrite and they did this and they did that and they did this and you kind of just think that that's your job. It says right there in that verse, honey, it ain't your job. It said, he says it so sassily, but you, who are you to judge your neighbor? You're not perfect either. I really, really like how he closes this all off. And it's about boasting about tomorrow. Um, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we'll go to this city and that city, we'll spend a year there, carry on business or make money, blah, 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 blah. Why? You do not even know that tomorrow will happen. What is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say the Lord's will. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. 
I'm so guilty of this. I kind of touched on it earlier in the video. Just kind of planning out my life and planning out my goals and all the things that I'm going to accomplish and all the things that I want and then kind of like halfway praying, yeah, God, if you could just like help me make this happen, that would be awesome. Instead, he clearly says it right here. Why? Why are you doing that if you're not praying that it's the Lord's will that gets done? If you're praying at the end of the day that your will gets done, that means nothing. God is... God's will is ultimately the best thing that could ever happen for our lives. His will for our lives, his path for our lives is the best, best possible way that we could ever go. And we spend so much time making our own plans and making our own accomplishments and bragging about this and bragging about that when it's all meaningless. I'm not saying, and I don't, this Bible is not saying either that you should just be like kind of a limp noodle in life and never set goals and never pursue anything and never do anything because God's will is going to happen no matter what. No, God's not just going to like, you're not a robot. Like God's not just down here puppeteering your arms and you can't just sit back and not graduate and then expect him to make you a doctor. You can't just sit back and never read your Bible but expect him to make you a preacher. You see what I'm saying? It's not to say we shouldn't set goals. It's not to say we shouldn't follow our passions or have all these things. And he placed those desires in us, but we are literally called to include him. We are called to be fluid and flexible throughout the process and open to whatever way he is going to use that goal. If you have a goal, great. But if you have a goal and you don't plan on including God in any of it, not so great. Um, you should always be praying with it in mind that it's okay if it doesn't work out but if it does work out God this is what I want to do with it this is how I want to use it for your glory um, I hope that that was explanatory enough I kind of feel like I was all over the place on this one but hopefully not hopefully I got my words across right um, chapter 4 is a short one like I said it was it's always a good one though. I seriously, guys, there is just so much goodness in the book of James. It's kind of cool how the word of God never expires and it never gets old and it never stops being true and it never stops being useful. It's literally 2019 and a book that was written thousands of years ago is still relevant today, which is insane. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you can join the Happy Soul Tribe. I post new videos about twice a week, at least every Friday for Faith Friday. Make sure you go out of your way today to love on someone, make them feel extra special just because they are, and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers,